Good morning, everyone. My name is Pablo Pacheco Jr. And today I have been privileged with the opportunity to share some thoughts with you. 20 years ago, one of the most tragic events in our lifetimes took place right here in the United States of America. It was the largest terrorist attack experienced by Americans in the homeland. Many are still dealing with the trauma that began on that fateful day. Others will never forget what took place back then. One thing that is certain is that life as we knew it before that tragic thing took place will never be the same. I have entitled this monologue 9-11, a precursor to Earth's final countdown. Before we get started, let us pray. Dear loving Father, we want to thank you so much, Lord, for preserving our lives. Lord, we pray for all the families of those that have been affected even today who are still struggling with the trauma that had taken place 20 years ago. And Lord, we know that we're headed into some more serious times as we get closer to your coming, the second coming of Christ. And so, dear Father, we just pray that at this time, as we get into this presentation, that, Lord, you will speak to our hearts so that we can definitely be ready for whatever comes our way and for your appearing. So, dear Father, we thank you and we praise you. and We ask these things in the name of Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. The September 11 attacks, often referred to as 9-11, were a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks. All of the mainstream propaganda machines told the population that the attacks were carried out by the militant Islamic terrorist group, Al-Qaeda. But suppressed evidence proves otherwise. The truth is that the United States has been confronted with the most deadly enemy it will ever have to face. And its, its name is not Al-Qaeda, by the way. This enemy is not only the usual military enemy, but it has the organization and the capability for massive espionage and clandestine operations within the United States. It uses a facade that is virtually perfect to hide its operations. In fact, right now, this enemy is working secretly to undermine the principles that made this country the greatest nation in the world. This enemy has infiltrated the highest levels and departments of the United States government and possesses an extreme danger to America. In order to understand this and understand that we're not really looking at an external enemy that is behind all of these events taking place, but an internal enemy, we must look at a little history and understand the methods that this enemy has used in the past and how it is secretly working today. Remember, the Bible tells us that Babylon, the system of Babylon, works in secret. It's not something you're going to hear on the mainstream news media. It's not going to be something that most people even know. But God has promised to reveal his secrets to his servants in Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. So God's people, his remnant people, will know what's really happening behind the scenes. We might not know every detail of what's happening behind the scenes, but we do know what powers are working behind the scenes. Reading from a quote. Europe was finally at rest. 
the Napoleonic Wars were now over. This was after the reign of Napoleon. After he had his wars, he was trying to conquer the world. He warred for about 20 years. And Europe was finally at rest after all of that. After all of that war, there was peace. Remember what the Bible says. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh. But regardless, in the aftermath of that, of those wars, European sovereigns convened a general council in Vienna, in Austria, in 1814. This council has come to be known as the Congress of Vienna. And the Congress continued its proceedings for one year, ending in 1815. Burke McCarthy, in the suppressed truth about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Arya Varda Publishing, 1929, page 7, wrote the following. The Congress of Vienna was a black conspiracy against popular governments at which the high contradicting parties I'm sorry, high contracting parties announced at its close that they had formed a holy alliance. This was a cloak under which they masked to deceive the people. The particular business of the Congress of Verona, it developed, was the ratification of Article 6 of the Congress of Vienna, which was in short a promise to prevent or destroy popular governments wherever found and to reestablish monarchy where it had been set aside. The high contracting parties of this compact, which were Russia, Prussia, which is Germany, Austria, and Pope Pius VII, King of the Papal States, entered into a secret treaty to do so. Again, that was reading from Burke McCarthy. So according to this gentleman, Bert McCarthy, the Congress of Vienna formed what is known as the Holy Alliance. And their primary goal was the destruction of all popular governments. They wanted to reestablish monarchy. Now, popular governments are those where the government allows its subjects to enjoy certain inalienable rights. So if we think about it, can you think of any popular governments that were establishing themselves in the world and granting their citizens certain inalienable rights around the year 1815? And if you guessed the United States of America, you would be absolutely correct. Senator, Senator Robert L. Owen, placed in the congressional record of April 25th, 1916, the following statement, which shows clearly that he thought the primary target of the Holy Alliance was the United States, in fact. Notice what he said. This is from Senator Robert L. Owen. He placed this in the congressional record on April 25th, 1916. This is what he said. The Holy Alliance, having destroyed popular government in Spain and in Italy, had well laid plans also to destroy popular government in the American colonies, which had revolted from Spain and Portugal in Central and South America under the influence of the successful example of the United States. It was because of this conspiracy against the American republics by the European monarchies that the great English statesman Canning called the attention of our government to it. Now, Senator Owen understood from the Congress of Vienna that the United Monarchies of Europe would seek to destroy the great American Republic and its blood-bought freedoms. Senator Owen was not the only one who knew about this conspiracy against American freedom and the Constitution. In 1894, 
R.W. Thompson, the American Secretary of the Navy, wrote the following, and this is found in the Footprints of the Jesuits, Hunt and Eaton, 1894, page 251. Again, this is written by R.W. Thompson, which was an American Secretary of the Navy. He wrote, the sovereigns of the Holy Alliance had massed large armies and soon entered into a pledge to devote them to the suppression of all uprisings of the people in favor of free government. And he, speaking of Pope Pius VII, desired to devote the Jesuits, supported by his pontifical power, to the accomplishment of that end. Notice, Senator Owen understood, I'm not Senator Owen, sorry, Thompson, R.W. Thompson, recognized that it would be the Jesuits of Rome that would be used to accomplish these purposes of the, of the Holy Alliance. Notice, what did he say again? He said, and he, Pope Pius VII, desired to devote the Jesuits, supported by his pontifical power, to the accomplishment of that end. He knew how faithfully they would apply themselves to that work, and hence he counseled them in his decree of restoration to strictly observe the useful advices and solitary counsels, whereby Loyola had made absolution the cornerstone of the society. You see, Thompson pinpointed exactly who would be the agents used by the monarchs of Europe to destroy the Republic of America, namely the Jesuits of Rome. And since 1815, there has been a continual assault on America by the Jesuits to, to try to destroy the constitutional rights of this great nation. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of Morse code this is what was used in uh, old days when uh, they were trying to get messages secretly across uh, over to uh, their um, units or home base. They would use Morse code if they were in trouble. Well, the famous inventor of the Morse code, Samuel B. Morse, also wrote of this sinister plot against the United States. And this was recorded in Foreign Conspiracy Against the Liberties of the United States by Crocker and Brewston. 1835 in their preface notice what samuel b morse said remember this is the famous inventor of the morse code he said the author undertakes to show that a conspiracy against the liberties of this republic is now in full action under the direction of the willy prince Metternich of austria who knowing the impossibility of obliterating this troublesome example of a great and free nation by force of arms is attempting to accomplish his object through the agency of an army of Jesuits. The array of facts and arguments going to prove the existence of such a conspiracy will astonish any man who opens the book with the same incredulity as we did. He said, what cannot be accomplished by arms or force of arms, the Jesuits are trying to accomplish through uh, secrecy. That's right. What does the Bible say? Mystery Babylon the Great. She works in secret. The array of books written that detail the sinister plots of the Congress of Vienna and the Jesuits against the American Republic are numerous. That this conspiracy has raged since 1815 is a fact of history. This conspiracy is in full force today and it is the reason 
that America is having so many problems at the present time. And what are we seeing today? America is losing her freedoms. So could it be said that they are accomplishing their mission? Took them a long time to do it, but they have finally got to a place where our freedoms are nearly gone. You know, most people know very little about the Pope's Jesuits. And the reason for this is that they are a very secretive society. In order to understand what the order of the Jesuits is, we need to consider the next quotation that I'm going to share with you. We're going to be looking from uh, reading from the Great Controversy, page 234 and 235, written in 1911. It states, throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by formidable foes. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed, Rome summoned new forces, hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created, the most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of popery. Cut off from earthly ties and human interests, dead to the claims of natural affection, reason and conscience wholly silenced, they knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order, and no duty but to extend its power. The gospel of Christ had enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure suffering, undismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty, to uphold the banner of truth in face of the rack, the dungeon, and the stake. But to combat these forces, Jesuitism inspired its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure like dangers and to oppose to the power of truth all the weapons of deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice. No disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the reestablishment of the papal supremacy. And isn't it interesting that when we look at how, how much influence the papacy has today, it has become friends with all nations, even the Muslim nations. Every nation that used to be at, at odds with the papacy are now friendly. Even our own uh, denomination, even. I mean, it's, it's just amazing what has happened. When presidents go visit uh, the Vatican, they are the ones that bow down to the papacy, which shows you symbolically who's ruling who. But these things would never be caught by the general public because they do not understand the symbolism behind their uh, gestures. Reading on in the Great Controversy, when appearing as members of their order, they wore a garb of sanctity, visiting prisons and hospitals, ministering to the sick and the poor, professing to have renounced the world, and bearing the sacred name of Jesus, who went about doing good. But under this blameless exterior, the most criminal and deadly purposes were often concealed. It was a fundamental principle of the order that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, theft, perjury, assassination were not only pardonable, but commendable when they serve the interest of the church. Under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state, climbing up to be the counselors of kings and shaping the policy of nations. Could it be that they shaped the USA Patriot Act? Of course. Security Enhancement Act? Of course. They became servants to act as spies upon their masters. 
They established colleges for the sons of princes and nobles and schools for the common people. And the children of Protestant parents were drawn into an observance of popish rites. All the outward pomp and display of the Romish worship was brought to bear to confuse the mind and dazzle and captivate the imagination. And thus the liberty for which the fathers had toiled and bled was betrayed by the sons. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe and wherever they went, there followed a revival of popery. See, brothers and sisters, the evidence shows that 9-11 was in fact a false flag operation orchestrated by the Jesuits of Rome in order to begin their countdown to the final takeover of one of the last great frontiers of liberty and justice. America has long been an obstacle to the Jesuits' plan because their plan is to bring the world back into the dark ages. And America has been as a thorn in their flesh. They hate, they abhor the Constitution of the United States of America. This is why they had to assassinate John F. Kennedy, who was a Catholic, by the way. But he said he would uphold the United States Constitution, which guarantees freedom of religion. He signed his death warrant with that statement. Satan has long desired to take complete control of this planet. God's amazing grace and blessings have been on this country for many, many years, and it's been an obstacle in his plan. And his right hand, Satan's right hand man, is the Supreme Jesuit General, who is also termed the Black Pope. The Bible warns us, brothers and sisters, in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 and 15, it says, do not marvel. For Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You see, 9-11 was a precursor. And it was acted out upon the highest levels of secrecy to transform the dynamics by which this great republic always stood. It was to affect a paradigm shift. It didn't take them long because exactly one month and a half after 9-11, they introduced a 342 page document to Congress entitled the USA Patriot Act. This was quickly accepted and signed into law the same, the very same day. Overnight, our freedoms began to get stripped away and erode. The Jesuits' plan was now coming into fruition. According to one source, this law had three main provisions. Number one was to expand surveillance abilities of law enforcement, including by tapping domestic and international phones. Think about it. Since 2001, they have been tapping our phones. Because that's what pro this... Uh, provision that was part of the provisions of the Patriot Act. Number two, ease interrogate. It says eased interrogancy communication to allow federal agencies to more effectively use all available resources in counterterrorism efforts. And number three, increase penalties for terrorism crimes 
and an expanded list of activities which would qualify for terrorism charges. And I don't know if you ever heard of, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, one of the uh, senators, I believe it was, or um, uh, one of the people in government, it was a woman, I forgot her name right now, but she listed among the activities which qualify somebody as being a terrorist. She included believing the Bible, being a fundamental Christian, holding regular Bible studies, and going to church regularly. Can you imagine that this woman who worked for the government included these activities as activities which qualify an individual to be a terrorist? You see, most people don't know these things. But they are fact. These are not opinions. These are absolute facts. This USA Patriot Act was also very controversial due to its uh, uh, authorization of indefinite de detention without trial of immigrants and due to the permission given to law enforcement to search property and records without a warrant, consent, or knowledge. Many other laws which have worked to completely repudiate the Constitution have subsequently been enacted. A couple of examples are, as stated earlier, the Domestic Security Enhancement Act of 2003, which, not, uh, which now allowed the government to spy on US citizens in even more, uh, uh, more ways and the National Defense Authorization Act, which had been modified to allow for government expenditure for the act of torture to both foreign and domestic terrorists. Remember what was included in the list of activities which they would uh, consider or which would qualify someone to be a terrorist. We haven't, they haven't really enforced that to the extreme yet, but soon we'll see how Bible prophecy will be able to be fulfilled. And it's because the laws of the land have already been prepared for, what's, for what they want to do in the future. So today we are starting to see elements that will cause all, <clears throat> both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Taken from Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. We're starting to see these elements, even with these restrictions that we're seeing now, and how the media and the government are now turning their attacks on regular citizens who do not, who want to exercise their freedom of choice, not to give in to being jabbed with toxins. And now many people are, are even in some countries, by the way, you can't even go into the, uh, to the supermarket without a vax pass. So we're seeing now elements that will soon cause all to receive a mark of the beast. And we know the mark of the beast has to do with worship, not with a jab, but the elements that are being introduced by way of this jab are the same very elements that will intensify and lead into what the Bible teaches to be the national Sunday law. The blue laws are going to be enforced eventually when there's a cry made by the uh, conservative Christians of this country for the government to get involved and mandate religious worship. That's what's going to happen in the long run. But you'd have to study Revelation chapter 13 in depth to really come to understand that. The question is, are we ready, brothers and sisters, to go through the mark of the beast crisis? 
Many are not even ready for the current crisis. Many have been committing suicide. You see, we have we surrendered our hearts to such a degree that our hearts will not fail for what's coming upon the earth? My admonition to you today is find your refuge and strength in the heart of God. Open your hearts and rest in the Savior's loving care. Soon and very soon, we will all be confronted with a choice. Will we give in to the Prince of Darkness and follow his plan? Or will we stand valiantly for Jesus, even if it means death? My prayer is that each person within the hearing of my voice take all of the necessary actions today so that when confronted, we will say like, we will say like the three Hebrew boys or the three Hebrew worthies said in Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. We will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This is what we need to be doing today. Preparing our hearts and minds to trust God with all of our heart. Knowing that our bread and water will be sure, even when our source of income has been cut away from us through these draconian uh, measures that are being implemented. When we know that we can confidently trust that God will see us through and that all things work together for those who love him. So let us fall in love with him today. Let us accept Jesus into our heart because he's our only safety. Our safety is not in money and bank accounts and lands and houses and fortresses or even underground bunkers. Our safety is in Jesus Christ. Accept him today and you will be safe in his bosom and nothing will be able to touch you. If God be for us, who can be against us? And if he permits anything to touch us, it's for some good. And our confidence in him will be so great that we would delight in doing whatever it takes to co-labor with him in this great controversy that's taking place between good and evil. So, brethren, I pray that this presentation would have been a benefit to each one of us as we contemplate what has happened many, many years ago, which has now put into play Earth's final moments and events 9-11 was a precursor to Earth's final countdown. Soon and very soon, Jesus will come to claim us as his own. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to transform us to such a degree that his character will be fully reproduced in each and every one of us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for speaking to our hearts this morning. Lord, we know that things are wrapping up very quickly. Even Testimonies, Volume 9, page 11. 9-11. Testimonies 9-11 state that the final movements will be rapid ones. And we are surely seeing the movements taking place rapidly. And what movements? The movements of the Jesuits, which began way before 9-11, but still went in full speed ahead at 9-11. 9-11 was a turning point. It was a victory for the Jesuits, and it started to bring this country into a rapid downward spiral where the Constitution was being repudiated and chipped away little by little, where we uh, end up today, where now even it seems as if the Constitution doesn't even exist because we don't even have a freedom to even uh, have our own decision to our health, but we do because you have given us the commission to do all things to your honor and glory, whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do. And so, Lord, if we you have promised us, Exodus 15, 26, if we keep your laws and statutes, that you will keep the diseases, these pestilences away from us and that you'll protect us and nothing will hurt us. Even in Isaiah, you said you, you hear us before we even pray. 
And so, dear Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for your promised protection and guidance. And so, dear Father, remove all fear from our hearts. We, we pray, Lord, that you will be with all those who have been impacted by what happened 20 years ago. Lord, continue to comfort them and lead them to yourself so that they can have a good, strong relationship with you. And Lord, I pray that you will wake up the minds of the, the, the masses because the majority have been led into deception by the secrecy of Babylon. And so, dear Father, I pray that you will wake up more people and even in government, that you will use people in government to stand up for what's right so that the winds could be held back so that all your servants could be sealed in their foreheads and ready to go through the final, final events. Dear Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with thanksgiving. Amen and amen.